Andy No joins us now. Andy, thanks so much for coming on the show. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Andy, before we get into the chaotic scene that played out in Texas, I would love to hear your thoughts on the president saying that Republicans are semi-fascist. Um, that's completely inappropriate. I wasn't aware that he made that statement, although I'm not particularly surprised. I think the Democrats uh, over the past few years have been increasingly mainstreaming the language of Antifa. Um, and even in the best of times, depending on what city you're in, have actually even expressed support for them. So the fact that this is going all the way up is not surprising, although very disappointing. Yeah. So if you guys missed the story out of Texas, and that's what we're going to talk to him about next, it's been all over the news and it's very strange. You hear about these drag shows, and this was heavily armed Antifa militant stand guard outside Texas kid-friendly drag show. A kid-friendly drag brunch for all ages was guarded against protests by armed Antifa militants carrying AR-15s. Uh, the event called the Barrel Babes Drag Brunch was advertised as dancing music and laughs. Journalist Taylor Hansen said that the kid-friendly event featured vulgarity and partial nudity. Protesters outside the event were spit on and confronted by activists who support kid-friendly drag brunches. Andy, give us a little bit of information on this event and then how it escalated to the point of needing Antifa militants standing outside. Yes, so to recap, on Sunday, uh, the 28th of August, um, a group of armed and masked Antifa members a mass outside the Anderson Distillery and Grill in the small city of Roanoke, uh, Texas, which is in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, Antifa gathered to intimidate and to counter conservative protesters who uh, had organized to oppose what they said was a drag queen event that exposes children to sexual indecency. And... Did did you notice anything about the interactions that Antifa was having with people outside of this event? Well, the first thing is that the presence of them with armed uh, ARs and also having strategic people placed in nearby buildings are sort of snipers. I mean, the purpose of that is to intimidate those who would dare to express their First Amendment rights. Um, the debate around um gender ideology in children and particularly very sexualized pride events or drag queen events around children is very contentious and conservatives have expressed their views on the matter and have protested but you see whenever they express their free speech you have people who do things like carry out violence against them such as anti have done or show up with guns to threaten that they are ready to kill if need be. I think the takeaway from this, though, is that people who presume that Antifa don't organize in Texas or red states or in the South are incorrect. In fact, they're very organized in some of the most surprising of places, and I think that's because people have generally been complacent and think it's a problem for, let's say, the Boston area or Portland or Seattle or Los Angeles. Yeah, and Andy, I would actually add to that that it's not just that people assume it's not going to happen in their area, but there's a a good portion of people who don't really think it even exists. I mean, you've heard Joy Behar say that before. You've heard politicians say that before, that it's a myth, that it's a fantasy, that Antifa is, you know, just a word used by Republicans. It's a Republican talking point. And I I know you're an editor at the Post Millennial. I I know you're an author and you've written the book Unmasked, but you're also a very brave journalist and you've had your run-ins with Antifa. Antifa, and, and so you can tell my audience firsthand what it's like. Yeah, so when I hear people in media and even politicians say that Antifa doesn't exist as a real organized movement or, or groups, it's infuriating because I'm speaking from a personal experience. I'm somebody who's been repeatedly violently victimized by these groups for daring to document their criminal activities that take place in the public, particularly months of rioting that happened in 2020. I wrote a a New York Times bestselling book on the matter. So I guess for those who don't uh, think they're real, I say watch the videos of the assaults on me and look at my hospital records and look at the scars on my body to see what has happened to me for daring to stand up to them. Andy, if you had to say, though, what area um, you've noticed Antifa has the strongest hold of, where would you say? 
in any area where any urban area where city council uh, is entirely left wing. So Boston, um, Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, Oakland, and I think what the takeaway from that is uh, um, mainstream Democrats have really worked to embolden. Um, the far left extremists on the side, and in fact, in some ways, Antifa often act as a paramilitary-like group of the Democrats. Not in the sense of there being an official uh, relationship, but rather, Democrat politicians can see that Antifa will use violence to drive away their critics who engage in public First Amendment activities, and then the politicians look the other way. Um, and, I mean, in the case of Portland, the mayor is also the police commissioner, so there's also a conflict of interest there, and this is also repeated in other urban areas. Yeah, but one of the things I'd love to ask you about, you mentioned that these Antifa militants had AR-15s, and that's that's kind of, I noticed that, because it would seem like for a group of people, they're far left. Uh, we, we hear a lot of these Democrat progressive politicians talking about taking away people's guns. And then you have these people outside of this kid friendly drag show with AR-15s. I, I can't imagine that the liberal people walking by that like the sight of it. Well, I would agree with you there. But where is the uproar from Democrats over what happened um, on Sunday outside this? Um, drag event. There is no uproar. In fact, they've been completely ignoring it. The liberal press has been ignoring it as well. So all of these liberal and Democrat party-linked gun uh, control groups are also revealing that they they're, they aren't actually really about gun control. They're about con- gun control against their political opponents because they really have no issue when people on the far left take up arms to intimidate those who are carrying out free speech activities. And Andy, I do I do find it um, an interesting kind of combination that you have Antifa, and like you mentioned, it's kind of surrounding this gender ideology conversation that's happening in this country. And that, I would argue, is another thing that people on the left like to say, Republicans are blowing that out of proportion. It's, it's not that big a deal. Um, you know, if you don't like it, just walk by it. Do you think gender ideology is something that is going to come to a head where people have to have this conversation? Or do you think we could just keep ignoring it and hoping that, you know, the, the drag, the kid friendly drag shows, you know, don't come to a neighborhood near you? So speaking as someone from within the so-called LGBTQ community, I'm a gay man. I think the the social pact that I think the gay community had with, let's say, wider heterosexual society during all the um, gay marriage debates was that we just want to live as adults in consensual relationships and that um, our lifestyles have nothing to do with children or indoctrination. And in fact, now, what is very distressing is that that pact has been broken by the current manifestation of the LGBTQ lobby movement, because now it is explicitly about indoctrination of children. They are not hiding any of it. And I don't mean indoctrinating them to be homosexual, but sexualizing them from an early age, exposing them to very sexual content in education, sexual content um, in the form of these performances that really have, I mean, you know, it's it's re- completely reasonable and understandable that parents are, th- th- there's an uproar about this. If you look at any of these shows, which is adult entertainment that normally takes place in the context of a bar or club being performed in a milder way, or sometimes not even milder way in front of children, where they're encouraged to give money to these adult performers, I completely understand why there are those who are calling that a form of grooming or ideological grooming. Andy, no, we appreciate you coming on and all of the work that you do. Can you let people know where they can find you on Twitter and where they can read more of your work? Yes, my website is andy-ngo.com and my Twitter handle is at Mr. Andy NGO. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andy. We hope to have you on again soon. We'll be right back with your calls. 844-500-4242. This is The Grace Curley Show. You're listening to The Grace Curley Show.